All right, well, good evening, everyone. Um, it is six o'clock on Thursday, May 9th. So let's call this airport advisory board meeting to order. Kayla, would you mind please calling the roll? Chairperson Harrison Earl. Here. Thank you very much. First item on our agenda, as always, is public invited to be heard. For formality's sake, I'm going to ask if anyone would like to speak, even though there's nobody else here. And then we'll close the first public invited to be heard and move on to the approval of the April 11th, 2024 minutes. Does anyone have any changes, comments to any of those minutes? Vice Chair Jordan. I noticed on line, page one, line 31, um, the language isn't quite right. Uh, discussed that the project would be best for the grants money, that would be best for the grants money, would be the LED transition from lighting, uh, for lighting, I think it should be, over from standard to incandescent, or over from standard incandescent to LED. We just need to kind of fix. Mm -hmm. Contestant? We've got a contestant, yes. Yeah, so it's incandescent. So however that should best be worded that we want to go we want to use the grant money to transition the runway lighting from standard incandescent to led and then on uh, page two line 20 it's actually something i said which i'm not sure what i said but um the board any pilots on the field it says runners i think i probably said hangar owners and the public are invited to contribute. It was talking about the annual report. So I think that's hangar owners, but I wasn't even sure. Yeah, well, we can change that to hangar owners and revise the lighting on, or I'm sorry, the wording on page one with the lighting. Anything else, Melinda? That's it. Does anyone else have any changes, comments? <clears throat> Would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes as amended with Melinda's comments? Um, approve. Mr. Dean. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And just for the record, um, I'm gonna call that four approved. I'm gonna abstain just because I wasn't here. So I don't, can't vouch the accuracy. So four nothing with an ex and abstention. Updates from the airport manager. Levi, where do you wanna start? All righty. Um, current updates. Um, kind of building off recent events, um, Tuesday did an uh, airport update for the city council, and uh, Melinda and Harrison were for, there for that. I can give it a little quick update for everybody here, just at least let you know what I talked about. Uh, we talked about current activities at the airport, which was essentially um, the National Guard was there for their annual firefighter training and stuff like that. Uh, we talked about airport projects in the works. That's all stuff that we've talked about here before. That's the wildlife fence project coming up um, this year, and then next year the pavement rehab project coming up. Um, I gave, uh, it was great interest, of course, to um, the city council, um, unleaded fuel. That was one of the main questions they actually asked me to address during the airport update, so I kind of gave them the background, the history on where we're at now <coughs> with that, where the future potentially is going. To give a quick summary on that, so I'm not sure if we've actually talked about that in a capacity um, in our airport advisory board meetings. Um, we're a little bit ahead of the curve, actually, because we're an airport that offers an unleaded aviation fuel uh, substitute mo gas. We're on the few in the area, um, but we don't have any uh, the Swift or the Gammy or anything like that quite yet. We talked about the challenges that's getting to that point, um, getting that fuel produced in volumes, getting that fuel approved by the FAA. Um, in a manner that doesn't create or cause everyone to go have to get a supplemental type certificate. Um, what else did we talk about? Um, the f infrastructure that would go behind it. You, mean you can't just have it poof magically on the field. You have to have the infrastructure, the tanks, the fuel tanks, stuff like that. So that's the kind of update we gave them. I also gave a quick rundown update of those of you who are a little more tied into the industry. You might have heard about uh, UND's uh, recent struggles with the new Swift fuel. Uh, UND looking to you know, technology school drive forward the concept of unleaded aviation fuel, switch their whole fleet over to the new Swift unleaded. Um, 
and in about a month switched it back they had pretty significant engine fouling issues and damage to exhaust valves so they're sorting all that out so that was a little bit of a setback on that um, we talked about commercial development on the airfield which is something else we've all talked about here that's why we're going doing the airport master drainage review so we can potentially open up um, the airport for rfps and stuff like that so we talked about that and then we gave an air show update um, a, good, a pretty quick, just general air show update, when it is, what it is, what we're expecting, kind of stuff like that. Um, noth nothing too nitty gritty into the details, but a good overall view. I thought it was just an excellent opportunity with the press there, with all the people there, the city council there, just to make sure that everybody's kind of on, you know, what's the term I'm searching for, informed, if you will, that, you know, that is something that's moving forward with. All right. So that was that first part. Can I pause for any questions? I was going to say, should here? we pause for questions? Does anyone have any questions, comments on the council update? I'll just say briefly, um, Levi, I thought you did a great job with the presentation. The council asked some questions. They were clearly engaged in paying attention, um, which I appreciated. It's We haven't had a lot of airport FaceTime. You know, we collectively, yeah. city staff, haven't had a lot of airport FaceTime. With the council, so that was really good to see. Yep. Um, only other thing I'll add, just for the board's knowledge, is I talked with the reporter at the Times call prior to Levi's presentation about some of those same topics. The article hasn't come out yet. If it will, um, there were other things at the council meeting mm -hmm. that made the paper instead. But just be aware that you know we had a discussion about the air show, about unleaded fuel, and about some of those things. Trying to get just educate him a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I would expect at some point that comes out. And and that actually brought up, there's one slide I missed there. We also talked about the noise complaints thus far this year. Thus far this year, we've had 17 household complaints, um, noise or other complaint related. And one positive airport <laughs> comment. Love the positive comment. <laughs> you didn't mention that. Yeah. Very few people, yeah, put in positive. But one positive airport comment. Uh, Vice Chair Jordan, did you want to? I was just going to say you were in the Longmont Leader today, okay. so I'll forward you that article. They, they okay. did a good job. All right. Yeah. Um, who, that's Mr. Meester. Sorry, it only gives me a seat number, so I have to look at my cheat that's sheet. That's okay. I'll be I'll be number two or mm. ten, depending. I, I, I've got a you're number two. On oh, there. well, good. Thanks. Um, were there specific areas of noise complaints? Was it were they mostly centered on commercial operations or just? GA. Yeah, they're mostly GA, and it was asked because uh, it's a big uh, concern of Harold with the past. Um, how many mile high complaints specifically were in this year? We've only had two complaints specifically relating to mile high. Um, so, but it's it's most generally general aviation. It's whoever, and, so, and a lot of the complaints they they don't even say. It's like, oh, these noisy planes. And they don't. I ask usually when I get stuff like that is hey you know it would greatly help us if you were to give us in numbers you know tell can you describe it more and most generally people never respond back and by the way you live next to an airport yeah <laughs> All right uh, next item I uh, kind of along the same vein that same city council meeting um, after that they did have the session talking about the potential um, rezoning um, for the areas off the approach end of runway 29 um, City presentation um, about that, essentially talking about what they want to do. is, is in, you know, to kind of summarize what the city's looking at doing, uh, the approach path that goes into 2-9, and really the approach path that goes into 1-1, one, one, even though that most of that's county property and not within our purview 2 zone, but those sections of it that would be essentially zoning them as non-housing. Um, the, where that kind of left at the end of the night is the city council kind of said they wanted more information prior to moving forward if they wanted to do. I can mention that in... Um, sessions prior to that, the City Council did uh, vote unanimously to get direction on no, getting what they wanted to, yeah, you know, the information to, I can't talk, I can't talk tonight. Too many, too many council meetings. Um, they did unanimously vote to get the Planning Department and the City Attorney's Office to give them direction on what they should do, essentially to avoid issues in the future, so they do seem to have a very, um, aware mindset about the issues that's going on with the FAA and stuff like that. But they did ask for additional information uh, from the FAA, so I'm looking at potentially reaching out to them to get a meeting set up for City Council. John Bauer, you know John, did mention to me that he would come and talk to the City Council. Um, so I will reach back out to him and see if he's actually going to follow through and do that. We'll see. Um, but that's 
was also occurred at that city council meeting. Any questions on that pause during the update? I'm gonna add a little context if you don't mind. Yeah. So I, I would encourage everyone, go look at the city council packet from that meeting. Um, it has an FAA letter in it that you've probably seen before, but it also has a map of these proposed changes that I think is really helpful. Um, if there was a way for me to throw it on the screen, I would, but it's in the packet from the last meeting. You know, they've described as kind of a paddleboard. So you know, along the runway and the immediate safety areas is just no development period. And then extending out, you know, really the relevant is kind of from airport road to Nelson road. Um, in a diagonal, same as the runway, um, that's no residential. Mm -hmm. the, the challenge among a lot of them is there is residential in that zone already, a limited amount. Um, so creating, creating this zone makes those a non-conforming use, which is, depending on who you ask, problematic or no problem whatsoever, depending on the perspective you believe of the people in the room. Um, and there's also proposed developments within that area that are potentially impacted, again, depending on how you read the mm -hmm. regulations and when they come into effect, potentially a huge impact, potentially no impact. Mm -hmm. um, one of the central questions and you know, something I talked to a couple of council members after the meeting about, you know, we, we've certainly seen this in other airports locally, so it's very easy for them to grasp. There have been conflicts in, mm -hmm. in and around Rocky Mountain Metro, kind of notably. Um, this, this, this comes back to one of our 39 grant assurances that the airport sponsor agrees to every time they get an airport, a grant from the AFAA. Uh, t grant assurance 21, I want to say, yeah, is land 22. use. Yeah. And it effectively says the airport sponsor, in this case, City of Longmont, must take reasonable steps to prevent incompatible land use around the airport. Um, because City of Longmont owns and operates the airport as the airport sponsor and sets the land use, it's kind of on the city to um, meet that obligation. Yeah. At least the FAA would argue. Yeah, and in, conversations, an in yeah. conversations with the FAA, essentially that's what they said. They said, hey, you're the city, you control yeah. the zoning, you also control the airport, there's no excuse. It's essentially what they told. We're in you know, Jefferson County's case who owns Rocky Mountain Metro. Yeah. Very different because the town of Superior, they can you know, yell and tell Superior, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But then they have Meet to their grant obligation. Yeah. But Superior can still go develop it, and mm -hmm. there's really not a ramification for Jefferson County by the FAA. Yeah. A lot to unpack there. There are a lot of really good questions. This will come up more. Um, it so will. Just want, I, I hope we can keep talking about it as it develops, because um, I think it would be helpful for us to provide an opinion to the City Council when they get to a formal vote point. I think that's well. an excellent thing to keep an eye on. Um, Working with the city, and it's been a, it's we've been working on this now for over a year. I think we finally reached a, a point among the staff is pretty much in a consensus uh, consensus of what kind of needs to occur moving forward to make sure that we're not running afoul of the FAA. I think now it's just now communicating that to the city council. It kind of seems uh, it kind of seems to be the the feeling of that. And there there is kind of a second part of this that I didn't talk about, and really the council didn't have any issues with it. But within that overall airport influence zone, there is the call for navigation easements. And that's mm -hmm. something we've talked about a lot here. And that just, it codifies that requirement. Yeah. No one seems to have an issue with that because that is effectively a disclaimer. It doesn't limit development. Yeah. It adds a paperwork burden. There was, I mean, zero question about that. And I brought yeah. it up in my public comment to the council. And those are good. I know that we've talked about navigation easements in this group before, but just to kind of touch you on those again, reiterate, it's... It's essentially when you buy a new property, it's a piece of paper you sign that says, hey, I live next to an airport. I recognize I live next to an airport. Um, it's going to be noisy. I did, I, one of the first things I sorted out when I got here was we need navigation easements. They haven't codified them yet, um, but working with consultants and stuff like that, I, in my personal opinions, the ones that we had written up are very rock solid. They're very good. I ran them past Rocky Mountain Metro's folks to make sure who just went through all this that there's nothing that they saw issues with them either. Um, so they are good. Um, I've heard in the past a lot of arguments saying that, oh, we don't need to rezone because we've got these really great navigation easements, and that's not great. <laughs> um, navigation easements is one of those things that is nice to have in your back pocket, but it's not going to stop people from suing you, you know, when it gets down to it. They, they can still bring a lawsuit, and they can still cause, you know, airport fund dollars to go out the door, even if they've signed a navigation easement, which is what Rocky Mountain is dealing with. Uh, yeah. Mr. Meester. Is there a, a measured distance for development on any approach? On That's what um, 
this is about. It's changing the code to essentially set a standard for that. Um, so the standard that the planning department here, I think wisely decided to go with it was just the standard that's kind of set out as an example in advisory circular regarding development around airports. Kind of, you know, shows the airport influence zone, it shows the approach departure areas, if you will, and it kind of says, okay, you know, these are okay for housing, but, you know, within, you know, the approach for runway 29, we don't want daycares, hospitals, schools, stuff like that, housing, hotels, is mentioned in there also. So, so those sizes just, I'm looking at the ordinance draft okay. on the screen. Um, zone A, which is no development whatsoever, is effectively the runway protection zone, 200 feet past the end of the runway, um, 250 feet wide at the end of it. Um, sorry, end of the runway safety area extends. My apologies. I'm going to start this over because this is confusingly It's written. all good. The it's runway safety today, area <laughs> extends 200 feet past the end of the runway, and the RPZ extends a, a further 1,000 feet. Um, yeah, 450 feet wide at the hard, end. Hard to land in 200 feet. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so then and then the approach zone, the zone B, that's the no, um, that's the no residential mm -hmm. um, lodging, et cetera, is uh, 4,000 feet beyond that limit of zone A, so 5,000 feet. At, um, from the end of the runway. Uh, with the far end of it of 1,250 feet, it also is a trapezoid, so it kind of gets wider as you go further out. Uh, the maps make a lot more sense than what I just said, though. Yeah. There, I, I'll give uh, the planning uh, section at the city here <coughs> credit. They did a nice job when they kind of thought what's logical and what would be good moving forward. So the maps are nice. <coughs> uh, Vice Chair Jordan. Um, I was going to add that they did mention rentals, that renters, because that is potentially low to medium income yeah, housing, that's something and that, that they will require mm -hmm. the renters to sign the avigation easement. That's something that came out of early on when we were talking about the avigation easements is that, yes, Renter, something yeah. that I brought up is, I've, a lot in the past I've dealt with people, it's like, well, I didn't sign those documents. Right. So how can we also, and it's, it's a little bit of a new thing, how can we also not only have avigation easement in that pile of standard pile of paperwork when you buy a house but also essentially put language in that saying if you're a renter oh by the way you're also required to provide this to any new person who's leasing right. land for, or yeah. space from you or and in a lease no. agreement the so in that context theoretically if everyone's following the letters of what they're supposed to be doing there shouldn't be any situations where people say well I wasn't ever informed because there's somewhere along the line, there's an obligation that you should have been informed. Right, by the realtor or the the yeah. tenant, the lesser the um, landlord. Owner, landlord, yeah, there you go. that word. The other thing, um, as they were talking about it, and with the map up, I was looking at neighboring airports that they referenced in that conversation, and just taking the length of the available runway on four flight and transposing mm -hmm. it. Um, you see it for us with 5,000 feet for 5,000 feet. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's unincorporated Boulder County and it's Anderson storage. I mean, there's a lot of stuff taking up a good bit of that space. Yeah. I do see the carve out. I do see why the there's lawyers were here. <coughs> but looking at specifically at Erie, given they've had some uh, impacts lately, and if then, you look at Erie, mm -hmm. the length of that runway is exactly what they did into that Anthem neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They kept it. Uh, Greenbelt, open space, uh, berm. So if you're going on seven, you know, you look up and it's a huge hillside yeah. before you get to those homes. Yeah. And the, there was a fatal, we've had And the FAA actually brought that up there. during their meeting. Yeah, so they yeah. still have, I've not heard of any homes being hit there. Trees, mailboxes, yeah. people dying, yes. But not impacting a home. And when you look at that, you can see that they really did take that same length of the runway and provide themselves an out that direction. The other direction, just like us, is agriculture. Most of the airports, Boulder, the other direction. Even from Boulder, if you lay it over, it goes to about those soccer fields at 119. Um, so it And there is nothing, and you're on the diagonal, if you can see down the runway, um, there's a body of water and trees, but there's no development. So it has been preserved at the neighboring airports. Um, it has not been preserved at Rocky Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a golf course at the end, and then homes right behind that. Of course, the homes are built right up on the shoulders. And then right below it, you've got industrial, uh, light industrial commercial, and then homes directly um, below that, uh, that approach coming from the... And that's why there's... And uh, one of the questions that was asked 
you know, not to get too deep into the discussion, um, uh, but one of the questions that was asked is like, oh, how come the, how come the FAA is now is just um, sending, telling yeah. this mm -hmm. this or sending this yeah. letter out? And one thing that I keep trying to reinforce to staff that um, isn't reiterated very often, I think the very first thing to that is to say no one's ever talked to the ADO before here. So they they not really quick to say that, but future incarnations of when the planning occurred from the airport manager, it doesn't seem like anyone had reached out to the airport district office and said, oh, by the way, we're planning this project here. Um, they have been doing the 7460 forms, mm -hmm. um, which I've also tried to communicate to the staff. And that's great that you're doing that, but the little office in Washington that handles 7460 forms does not talk to the airport district office in Denver. That's an unfortunate Disconnect. Okay. Define 7460 quickly. I'm sorry. 7460 is the document that you fill out to determine whether or not there's any obstructions um, in proposed building close to an airport. Um, so if you send that in to the office, all they look at is if there's anything in the flight path. They don't, they don't assess it for uh, proper land use. They don't assess it for what's being built there. They just look at the heights of your buildings and if it's going to intrude into their airspace. That's all they look at. It's the airport district's office, which is the local office here, to determine whether it's good land use or not. Um, so that's something that the FAA did re reiterate in their meeting was like, look, we can't comment if you don't ask us. <laughs> so that came out also. It's a good discussion for here. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is the kind of stuff we we've, we've want to be able to keep moving and pushing forward and doing whatever we need to do to, to uh, help. So it was good. Um, that was a good presentation by transportation. Um, we, uh, the discussion was good, and yeah, and city council was very engaged and asking questions and sent everybody back with some homework. Mm -hmm. um, but it's I'm glad that we're getting a chance to. This is the thing we've never been able to be involved in. We've always been behind it. It was too late. They were pouring foundations when we found yeah. out. Yeah, and I'm and I'm glad that they are doing it. And that's I'm actually a little bit surprised how quickly this has kind of come to the front of city council. Because mm -hmm. honestly, it seems like just four or five months ago, when I was kind of banging on planning's door, saying, "Hey, we need to get if we need to change the code, let's do it. Let's get in front of city council." So they're actually it's nice to see the engagement. I must admit. All right, continue on with the update. <laughs> I don't see anyone else for this topic, so yeah, I right. appreciate it. A um, little few housekeeping items. Uh, wildlife fence project moving forward with, there's a little bit of a, a hiccup in that um, with getting the FAA synced up with the city's procurement department. Um, we're at a point now where pretty much everyone in the FAA, everyone in the city and myself are all new to doing projects out here at the airport, so all of that knowledge has been lost. Um, the FAA says we can't write you a grant until we get 95% completion documents and things out for bid. The city says we can't do 95% completion documents and put this out for bid until you give us the grant. So that's where we're, we're currently at. Um, I was on the phone with the engineers this morning and I think I'm 99% sure I've got a, a fix for that um, solved. We're doing a quick meeting tomorrow to make sure that we are all good on that for moving forward. I don't see any significant hang-ups on that, but there is a little bit of a hiccup. Um, we want to make sure we move forward with that so we're not missing out on any grants this year so we can actually move forward with some work. Um, other things going on out there. Any questions on that? No. That should be rolling along. Um, little housekeeping things. Uh, uh, mowing. Clemente started today mowing. Um, so he should be done Friday, so I'll probably get out there Monday morning with my map and just make sure that everything was cleaned up via our contract. Um, the, the Public Works Department is continuing to move forward with installing bollards um, around the fire hydrants, the gas lines, and stuff like that at the airport to bring us into compliance. Um, they're doing that kind of slowly. It's kind of a uh, when the guys have time project, which is fine. You know, it hasn't been done out there ever, so just to have it kind of slowly being moved on is good. Um, Let's see what else is going on out there. Um, oh, went to the AAAE National Conference um, last weekend or weekend before last? Le weekend before last, I think. Um, good, very good. It was in Nashville this year. Educational. I'm glad I got there a little bit early. Got to sit through the General Aviation uh, Council meeting. Um, I spoke. <laughs> quite a bit um, I think a lot because I'm we're in Boulder County um, so it kind of they were asking about 
hey, who's got, you know, who actually has unleaded fuel? I think I was the only airport there that actually had unleaded fuel on the field. We talked about what demand, what we were hearing, and stuff like that. So a lot of the new information I got for the city council came out of that meeting. I also attended sessions including uh, alternative airport funding, which is really good to sit uh, through, talking about the grants that are out there that we can potentially get. Um, not a whole lot of revelations came from that. Um, I think we're still doing pretty good on the grants that we can get. There were some other things that they covered that I was less familiar with, uh, alternatives to uh, loans that I didn't know about on a federal level and on some other direction levels. We're not there yet that we need to utilize that, but it was good to learn about. Um, trying to think what else came about that. Um, so through some interesting sessions, like equity and aviation, um, nothing that applies to any immediate projects that we're going through right now. Oh, I did try to attend the hosting a large event um, at your uh, airport. Um, little similar. It was only like a 15, 20 minute one. Um, it was, you know, on the sides during like, you know, lunch, right? They had a little meeting set up along the, and Harrison knows, along the, uh, uh, in the exhibit hall. Um, it was kind of educational, but mostly it was just two guys talking about um, how they did a, an eclipse show at their air show and uh, how they got booze in <laughs> to it. So not not quite as, as, as educational as I thought, but it was good to sit through and kind of listen to their experience. Um, that's kind of the highlights of it anyway. I, I did make some good contacts, including, um, it actually reminds me, I need to call um, one of the companies uh, reps is based in Longmont here that does a technology that tracks drones around airports. So I need to give her a call and kind of, I just thought I'd touch base with her, take her out the airport, at least let her show the, air, you know, show her the airport what's going on. Um, yeah, any questions on the, the AAAE? So, well, I have a question about the mowing. How much is the contract going to cost? Um, I'm sorry, I apologize. I didn't grab that figure for you. I know you asked that last time too. Um, I'll try to get that for you. Don't hesitate to remind me next time you see me, though, so I make sure that I get that for you. Because um, it's, I remember it was significantly more affordable than we had last year anyway. So it was like half the cost total. So that's good. Okay. But I don't have the exact figures on that. Cool. Let's see. Any other questions on the air show? Oh, not the air show, the AAA. Um, okay, apart from that, that's kind of a good general update at the moment. On the airport, is there anything that I'm missing? I don't think I, we can talk about that in comments later. All right. Any other questions for Levi? Okay. Action items we have none listed. Um, I was supposed to bring you all a draft of the annual report. Oh yeah. I do not have a draft tonight. Um, we are required to submit it by the end of June. Our next meeting is, I believe, June 11th. Um, if anyone has any input, I haven't seen anything yet. Um, Levi, I don't know if you got anything, but if anyone has input, please send it. Otherwise, I will send a draft individually to each of you to try to get comments, grammar, and everything lined up prior to June 11th. And something to keep in mind um, about that is uh, the annual report that the city council wants is like a one-page document. The annual report that we could do, I mean, we could do an annual report and the airport board, we could release it whenever we really wanted to and just send it to city council. Um, so, so, you know, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. But yeah, it, it seems like we need to kind of kick ourselves in the butt and <laughs> if we want to do something, do yeah. something. I, I, I take that one on yeah. ownership for that delay, but yes, on all fronts. All right, so since we have no other action items, assuming there was no question or discussion about that one, um, we're on final public invited to be heard. Would anyone like to speak? Seeing no one, we'll close final public invited to be heard. Board, council, and or staff comments, starting with board members. Melinda, I'm sure you have something, but um, Malcolm got in first, so Mr. Dean. The only one I have for Levi is the how much we spent for the snow removal for the gear, the total for... I mean, last time you mentioned you would have totals for the for the next meeting. Again, I apologize. I didn't. I left here last meeting and just my notes went out the door, so I didn't get that. But yeah, I can get that for you. <laughs> Mowing and snow. And again, next time you see me, don't hesitate to to, to poke me too to make Off sure that. Top I get your head that. was it more or less than the previous years? You know, this one was going to be less. Okay. Uh, the year before, 
this season was a really rough snow season. So yeah, um, we're doing pretty good on mowing and snow, hopefully this year. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Other board member comments? Vice Chair Jordan. Um, I was gonna bring up something that Matt mentioned since he didn't get here. The gate number four, mm -hmm. um, he said it was in up and that it was in the up position and mm -hmm. he was concerned about that and asking if it's in up, can it be put in the down position and locked um, so that people aren't trying to access it? Just it just had then, a, just thrown a breaker on it. Okay, because then he said, oh, now it's working. So yeah. <laughs> I figured I'll bring it up because he won't remember by next month. So to um, give everybody a quick update on that, um, well, unfortunately, they are improving the electric grid out at the electric uh, at the airport. In fact, they just did a whole bunch of new conduit on the south side of it. But we're at the end of the electric grid. Mm -hmm. um, those tilt-away gates we have are super nice. Oh, yeah. Um, all of the airports I worked at with nice entry gates usually use tiltaways. So the gates themselves are good gates. The problem is that they're f they're reliant upon continuous electricity and a good st stream of electricity, mm -hmm. what we don't, which we don't have, but which hopefully in the near future we will have. Good. All right. So he'll see that in the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, the air show. We have our next meeting uh, May eighteenth, Saturday. Levi's office unless I get a it's May which is a tough month you know, graduations and all kinds of stuff going on so I'm guessing our attendance may still be on the small enough side we can be in your office um, I worked on all my responses to the responses to my UOPP today um, know what the hot spots are that we got to work on and uh, um, I've prioritized our agenda with in progress um, or result, you know, resolved in progress or needing attention, and so I'm going to be working on those things to have that addressed before next week's meeting. Um, we're continuing to look for sponsors of all shapes and sizes. Um, the air show portion is coming together nicely. That is our biggest expense, other than the support. I got the bid on the band shell and all that, and it was it was incredibly high. Um, mm -hmm. So I can't. And he needs an answer because he's got all kinds of people wanting those dates. Um, I'll have to let it go if I don't know because it's it's just pretty prohibitive or get him to scale it down to just something really minimal. Um, he would like to do really good quality sound, um, which would be for the announcers, the anthem, then the band. I think of it for the announcers because we've always been weak with that. We've had less qualified announcing and you couldn't hear it. So it's encouraging. It's a, um, a projection system that's going to project it over everybody's heads, get the sound out further. It's a it's a lovely plan, but it also comes with a lovely price tag. So those are some things that mm -hmm. um, once we've got a clear picture on budget, um, with our expected number, I'm having to shoot high on off-duty police and porta potties and trash cans and a lot of expenses. Um, I do have the request into the city to for fee waivers, and it was for refuse, police, fire. I think there were only four things that I asked for, um, and we did get our permit fee invoice. So that oh, good. going through yeah so I mean they and they've been responding and everybody excellent been, yeah so it's a the new process is very nice excellent I've been it's, communicating with the city too and I think that the city is they're investing in the air show too yes so they, they they're they've, motivated they've, a lot to of stuff has already been reviewed and cleared um, and with the new portal you get to see all of that so it has each of your by line which item all my responses and then who's reviewed it who hasn't reviewed it um, then questions and then they give me a big comment box to respond to their questions and uh, it's a really nice system and everything's in one place so I've um, been putting a lot of time in on getting that done and then um, just uh, trying to nail down I'm gonna get Brianna to use up the rest of her budget and print us some more cards I've got the cards with the QR code oh, for and the thank website. you for those those are nice I actually yeah. gave some away at the conference good oh good so Brianna's gonna use up the rest of her budget and print some more of those for us and then um, Trevor's been working on the website so if you get a chance to go out and look at the website see what strikes you as missing and if you can contribute to it um, she there's a contact us you can just put it in there and submit it and uh, so there's some stringent language he'd used, but mm -hmm. yeah, he's still, you know, still a work in progress all the way up until the end. One comment that was made to me while I'm thinking about it was we I had a group that was asking for like a sign up, like a log on sign up sheet. So it is on the website. Okay. We do have it. Yeah. 
It's got the volunteer form and a contact us. And while we're talking about air show, I can just add real quick. Um, we just did a stop the bleed class at the airport. Um, yes. which was really great. Um, the nurses from the hospital had a great time, and we were talking about their show, and they, they volunteered. They'd love to be in touch with all this. They said they'd love to come out and do a quick lesson for the, the volunteer course, oh, too, for Stop the awesome. Bleed, um, and they'd like to be more involved with it. I also talked with Joe at the FISDO, and he volunteered hangar space, all the FBO, if we ever need any space like that, not only for their show but prior to for meetings and stuff like that. So that's good to know at least that that availability is there. Was there a sign up for the Stop the Bleed for people who attended? Was it? Have I put out a, a call to the airport and yeah. all their communications, and we had a, a decent turnout. We probably had eight, nine people there. Nice. I wanted to come to that. I had uh, yeah. some conflict. Um, because that is part of our first aid plan. We do mm -hmm. have to have, I'm going to have to have first aid because of the number we're Oh, certainly. And there we'll have, have to have ambulance on staff have, yeah, and stuff. Uh -huh. But it'd be, it's great to have the core also trained. Yeah. Of well, just one of my fire suppression between working with the fire department is that we have pilots with hangers with fire extinguishers on the field so I will be recruiting um, hangar owners for the perimeter um, to have their extinguishers where they can get to them or put them next to their stuff you know to have that as a as available and we'll see how the summer shapes up if it's wet you know it'll be less of an issue and uh, there's not a lot of combustible I mean any kind of fire is gonna be a big fire if it's anything that would be catastrophic yeah. and um, the police have devised their plan uh, that they're going to uh, brief on for our show so everything's heavily underway it's the liquor license the beer garden a couple mm -hmm. of those things I have to get uh, ironed out and and then just sponsors and donors so we can commit to more mm -hmm. acts with the air show and figure out the support okay those those bigger ticket items <clears throat> Mr. Meester. So if the weather is not cooperative, is it a hard scrub, soft scrub, partial scrub, no scrub? No scrub. It'll be, no scrub. It'll be it, unless, I mean, I did one in 2019 and it snowed. Um, <laughs> imagine, and, imagine that in Colorado. Yeah, can you believe it? And um, we still went on yeah. and we had helicopters come in, CAP came in. Um, it was more military uh, focused for a senior at Silver Creek that was going into the Navy. And um, they still came in. And that L39 that Matt owns was there. That's when I got all those pictures of it. So we had a lot of wet snow, but we cleared it and carried on. Our issue in September would be, it could be a freak snowstorm, which would melt quickly. Um, it did flood us out September 13th, 2013. Every time I say, the weather will be great, and then I remember September 13th, yep. 2013. So, um, it's the risk you take. Yeah. And so, but there's really, we can't reschedule. So it's either, yeah. Yeah. either we have it and it goes want, want, yeah. want, and nobody comes or, um, we cancel it. So something yep. catastrophic, we'd have to cancel it. If something on the field mm -hmm. happened, um, as something catastrophic I don't even want to go into all those uh, possibilities uh, and then rain would be a damper rain would definitely a low ceiling would uh, mess up our air show portion absolutely and we have lost our flyovers um, due to them running out of time they had something the night before and ran out of hours so we have lost that in the past we're not unfamiliar it's very disappointing but the public doesn't necessarily know and so <coughs> they just keep going and have a good time but yeah it would be catastrophic we'd cancel um, a biblical flood, biblical fires, famines, locusts, <laughs> frogs, what are all the other ones? <laughs> and then uh, otherwise we'll carry on. Yeah. Mr. Dean. And for Levi, so I did a lot more than know, I do have two uh, restaurants, two food trucks that have committed to the air show. So okay. we have so uh, an Indian, uh, which actually I've, I've had both are very good, Indian restaurant and then uh, a Mexican place in Longmont. So. Well, we'll want to coordinate with Alexa. She will be heading yeah. up the, okay. uh, and she should be at the next meeting. Okay. She'll be heading up the food trucks. And I, I communicated right after our last meeting to her about the plan to open up that fence, and okay. she loved that idea. Okay, good. So we're all on the same page there, too. Perfect, good, good. And then I guess just anybody, for the people here that are working on anything for the show, if you're asking for uh, a f a sponsorships and donors can come in the form of providing us with something we need. So water, food for the volunteers, um, um, printing of the t-shirts. I mean, we have so many small expenses that are with 100 volunteers, that's a lot of t-shirts. So 
if it occurs to you or you're doing anything in your personal or business life um, and find yourself in the avenue of um, dis uh, dispensable uh, uh, consumables that could be used by the volunteers um, that we give to the pilots. The, our debrief area is the um, police, fire, uh, first aid, ambulance. They all debrief in one area. We try to have hospitality for them, just keep people taken care of during the day. Um, sunscreen, you know, there's so many things, if you think about it, um, that we can use if somebody wants to donate in kind and donate product or, um, you know, donate. We purchase, I've asked United Rentals, I've rented the scissor lift from them and asked them to sponsor the price of the rental back. And so things like that. The stickers were sponsored completely by Sticker Giant. And uh, so that's another way to ask. So just if you're about in your daily business, um, smoke oil for the, for the air show, <laughs> whatever it might be. Yeah, so just uh, think in terms of that and anything, you don't have to come to all the meetings and, you know, and get bogged down with a lot of responsibilities, but that's something um, anybody in the community could help us with. Did you have something to leave? No. Okay. All right. I've got two things that I'll just bring up, and these are really quick. Um, one, city council passed on Tuesday a proclamation. This is just for board members, oh. um, recognizing all of us as board members, and it was Public Service Recognition Week. You've all gotten your letters. <laughs> um, Melinda and I, since we happen to be there, we're the ones who actually got the proclamation. If anyone would like to copy of it instead of us. <laughs> at least read it um, if you'd like to, but it's for all of you. And then second thing, um, I believe you're there, Levi, too, but before our next meeting, I'll, I will at least be at the Colorado Airport Operators oh, Association. Yes, yes. yes. Um, oh, yes, thank Summer, you. spring conference, whatever they yeah. call it. Um, there's usually some good topics there that we bring back and talk about. Um, I go for my day job, not because of this. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Levi's here because of his day job, which is this. Mm -hmm. um, but just a heads up that we'll have that, we'll, we'll bring in anything we can back from that just from that um, conference to talk about here too yep that'll be a good one any other comments from anybody I got a couple I thought of while we're doing that just real quick go ahead um, touch base with the new uh, I'm trying to think of her technical term but essentially the new PR lady for the city of Longmont she came out the airport she was really excited I just happened to be there on the day when the helicopters are there she got the camera crew out got a lot of b-roll footage for that that's great. So uh, it was good to touch base with her. And then just quick update on hangar inspections. Um, so far, really good turnout out of you know 70 some 80 structures on the on the airfield. We've already got 50 plus people signed up for hangar inspections. So that's really good. Um, and on, I think uh, we've also been having some really really positive response. One of the things that we decided to do is the airport. Um, since one of the the big issues with hangar inspections is uh, fire extinguishers are often they find fire extinguishers aren't certified, so we're, as airport, are going to cover your first fire uh, extinguisher certification, the cost of it. Uh, so we're going to do that. we got a company coming out on the airfield itself that's going to do that cert on those for people. So we've gotten a lot of positive response from that also. Vice Chair Jordan. I thought that was a great idea on yeah. the fire extinguishers. And then um, is Marika still involved in communications or has she moved? So Marika is flying for NetJets out of Florida. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, she went to go do the training, I think. Okay. I think it's NetJets she's going to go try to it's fly about for. about she's that ATP. Yeah. Um, and then do you have, I know I saw it announced, but I don't know if I saw her contact. Um, is that somebody I should, I should probably reach out Oh, the about. new? Yeah. It's Jill. Yes. Um, I saw it like in the paper or something. You know says. what? Let me make a note. Okay. Is, I th yeah, I should have. Did I not send her an introductory email to the like events you did, team? Now that I'm asking that, yeah. I might have. Yeah, I'll, I just I'll didn't check. know where Marika fit in the puzzle, and so I was out of respect for our connection. Yeah, I think I did. I think she okay. wrote something back generic like, hey, great to hear from you guys. Yes. Um, I do have that. I should You're definitely, right. I okay. should definitely, we should definitely get her the, the times of the, the mm -hmm. next, because she, I, when I remember I was talking to her, I asked her if she would come to the air show meeting. She said yes. Okay, good. So that would be an excellent thing okay. to do. I probably added her yeah. now that I say that. I'll look. All right. I'll take that one back on me. Levi, anything else? That's all I got. All right, so we had board and staff comments. I saw Councilmember Martin leave the minimum wage meeting and then walk back in. 
Oh. So I was going to give her a chance to have her own comments, but um, barring that, any ideas for future agenda items we haven't covered? Anything else anyone wants to bring up? I'm going to then call our meeting adjourned. Thank you all. Have a great evening.